Welcome everyone to this discussion on public sectors communication conundrum and how to support staff, deliver effective services and improve lives whilst overcoming technology silos. Um, I'm Mark Blanchard, I'm the Public Sector Director for GovNews and today I'm going to be speaking with Greg Stonehouse, the Chief Technology Officer at BGU. Greg, great to have you with us today. Thanks Mark. So Greg's an influential business focused and executive level IT leader with 25 plus years of impactful experiences in customer facing IT within the uh, within the education sector. His career journey started in te technical support, led into IT operations management and has now developed into executive level strategic IT, uh, uh, looking after leadership and delivery. He currently operates as a CTO for the university and his uh, extensive experience in IT strategy, team leadership, service and stakeholder management, project delivery, cybersecurity and technological infrastructure, probably just to name but a few. Is that right, Greg? Whole bag, that's right. <laughs> so great. For all aspects of technology here at BGU. Excellent. Great to have you with us and looking forward to our conversation. So this year, GovNews partnered with Ring Central to survey the public sector yep. to analyze their adoption of innovations in areas like cloud communications and collaboration. Um, yep. Over 500 participants completed the survey, more than half of which were C-suite, director, senior management level, and over 20% of all respondents represented academic institutions. And this series of talks that we're doing is to examine some of the insights and opinions and real world experiences coming out of that research. So I'm going to start with looking at, I suppose, the evolving educational landscape and the rapid adoption of ed tech. Uh, how do you envision the role of IT delivery in actually improving communications and collaboration within educational institutions? Thank you. I mean, the, the key here is, is technology plays an absolutely vital role in improving communication and collaboration. No question it's a key enabler, but it needs purpose. Um, and in particular, we don't want to be introducing technology just for the sake of it. You know, I, I'm, Behind the scenes, I'm a techie, um, but, you know, we, we can't be just introducing it when we think it, it, people need it. So we need to identify that purpose. The key bit in that question is around the role of IT delivery in improving that. And certainly from um, the perspective of IT within BGU, it's our role, mine particularly, to provide a very reliable and secure technology infrastructure. That's really that infrastructure has then been used by our students. It's been used by our academics, our staff, our visitors. And the whole idea of that is that they're able to access, share, create digital content, access resources. And the important bit in all of that is they need to do it securely, anytime, anywhere, on any device. And that's the kind of delivery that we've got to plan for in terms of technology. Now, it doesn't stop there because we've got a world of innovative technology out there too. So our ability to develop and implement more innovative technology, technology solutions, in particularly around emerging areas like artificial intelligence, data analytics, um, cloud computing, blockchain, you know, things that we haven't actually got in key standard deliverables right now, but it, they're forces, technology forces that are testing us in terms of how do we implement those things in a purposeful way. Yeah. Indeed, um, going on from there, it's about our people. So even with all the prep around the innovative technology and being able to access that wherever you need, when you need it in a secure way, you need to know how to and how to use that in an effective way. So it's important that we also have professional development for our staff and that's for existing. And it's also important that we make choices around the people that we bring in as new and we're recruiting against those skills that we need, those digital skills. And all of that, of course, is around training. We can take different approaches to that. It isn't just about sitting people in a room anymore, having learning portals for people, having the ability to provide training, which is more coached and mentored is other ways that you can approach that. Um, all of that, of course, bears down on our ability to teach and the technology then within 
the actual pedagogy, how our academics are teaching, how our student academic experience is being both designed and delivered. And that all comes back to our courses, our products, our curriculum. Indeed, that's only, again, an, an, another layer. So in order for that, all of that to happen, you've got to start to change your culture and fostering an actual culture within your business, within BGU for us, within higher education, that is built around collaboration and innovation, both from a student perspective, an academic perspective, our staff, and even perhaps our par the parents of those students. Yeah. Our external partners are in there too. And of course, we're using technology as again, coming back to the very point there on communication and collaboration, we're using that technology in order to facilitate that. And all of that from a student point of view is about feedback, sharing best practice, problem solving, project based learning, all that kind of good stuff. So hopefully that does that kind of uh, set the theme really? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, very much so. It's interesting, actually, you, I'm, I'm going to pick up on a, a comment. You, it's, it's, um, You've seen that shift in universities, um, you know, looking at how they, you know, deliver courses, deliver services. And you mentioned the word product. Um, yeah. I, th I think a lot of universities, obviously, if you take the economic value of the education sector and how you know, universities see themselves now, uh, they're, they're a preferred destination in the UK for foreign students. Yeah. Um, there's, there's obviously um, huge focus on the economic value of the education sector in the UK. How can advanced IT communication solutions further enhance the educational experience for both home and international students to support the sector's economic contributions? Yeah, good question. Uh, you're quite right. And taking from the report, you know, huge, huge export education from the UK around the globe. Now, as a university, we're quite small on the international front, but of course, we've got a strategy to grow. And in, in answer to the question there, in terms of how can technology, in particular, communication solutions contribute to that, I think at the top there, we've got to improve the accessibility and the quality of our online learning platforms and tools that enables that facilitation of what some may refer to, refer to as blended learning, or hybrid learning models. With that, we can offer more flexibility, more convenience, and perhaps even start to lean towards personalized experience, particularly for those international students and our home students, of course. Now, all of that is about enhancing that interactivity, that engagement with that on learning, online learning environment. And again, going back to the the sort of points just raised previously, we've got to start taking use of emerging technology, particularly AI, artificial intelligence. Gamification has been around for, for a long time, but certainly is an area that can enrich and enhance the interactivity that perhaps someone who doesn't set foot on premise with a university or is indeed getting aspects of their learning and teaching through online engagement. So certainly gamification, virtual reality, augmented reality, all of these things can be leveraged to create more immersive, more realistic simulation and um, enriched kind of experience, I suppose. Um, as part of that, we've got to remain uh, good with our communications and we've got to be effective with that, especially amongst our international students. And that really is brought about through, you know, sol cloud based solutions, which are geared towards things like we're doing today, video conferencing, instant messaging, using social platforms, not necessarily yeah, the channel really. approach. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So we've got multiple channels, but it's important that those channels get you to the same ends, you know, so you've got some personal choice there, I guess, with, with, mm. with the way that you can access those things. Certainly a sense of community is really important. And that isn't just about you know, perhaps you and I might meeting each other in the office for a coffee. It's about the digital communities that we, we drive and we create that that go hand in hand with that, that physical relationships that we have when we when we work somewhere. And indeed, in this case, you know, higher ed and academics working with students, we've got to support that in terms of academic success and the well-being of our students and our international students. And some of that's through provision of online support. Some of that is to do with potentially language assistance, translation, 
it can be academic advice, it can be mental health counselling, it can be career and employ employability skills. And indeed, important for internationals, it's about cultural integration. So although where I work today at Bishop Gross Test University, you'll note I do have a career working in higher education. And I did work at a much larger institution with a much larger international cohort. But those same things apply, no matter the size of a HE. I, we've got the same complexity and we have yep. the same challenges and that's you know that's really important there is something about our reputation globally as well and then therefore our ability to promote that and our visibility of that and i'll draw back to those products and services you know our courses our programs those kind of things and we've got to improve therefore and harness opportunities in the digital mar marketplace and our digital marketing strategies are really important with that such as search engine optimization social media campaigns online events webinars those kind of things again improving that reach that we've got for the things that we do and we do really well mm. well yeah. edtech's proven to be transformative hasn't it especially uh, you know we witnessed that during the pandemic with remote learning being an, a necessity um how do you feel educational organizations in general, how do they continue to leverage IT and communication tools to ensure the seamless delivery? We talked then, you mentioned then about blended learning, but yeah, that's you know, right. I mean, hybrid online education. Um, there's a certain irony here that, that for, for many technologists, uh, we needed a pandemic to, 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 to get for that the shot in the arm. Yeah. Yeah, to start to push forward on some of those technologies that we knew as I, IT colleagues and IT professionals would benefit a majority in, in a different ways. And perhaps it's appropriate here to, to mention my start at, uh, at Bishop Gross Test University. And I was very used to mobile working and, and smart working from a previous career. And I'd hopped from one meeting to another and uh, got back to the office after stopping off outside in the sun to catch up on a few emails. And I was met by the HR director asking uh, what I was doing outside of my office. I wasn't seen to be working. So that gives you kind of like a nice backdrop of where that cultural element was for BGU. Even though I was forming that digital strategy to take us to a place of, of more hybrid or smart working, there was still a cultural feeling that yeah. when work takes place you 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 sat in your office well, it's uh, and, always a place to go yeah that's right so you know the technology that can help in this space we we very quickly and we'll come on to perhaps some of the technologies that we've adopted to help with that but certainly adopting a, a hybrid learning model is key um, and that comes you know combining face-to-face -face and online learning activities to to enhance the, the overall learning experience for the students but during the pandemic, many, many institutions had to simply switch from face to face to, to blended and online, but not, of course, you know, didn't get the opportunity to truly validate that delivery in, 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 a, in a true online delivery. So indeed, we made the switch, we made the technology switch. Um, in order to do that, you know, hybrid learning can offer amazing flexibility and convenience and personalization that I've already talked about. And it can certainly help foster kind of higher level uh, skills. And indeed, it can start to harness things like individualized mentoring. We're a small university. And one of the things that comes out strong when we when we survey our students and indeed things like the National Satisfaction Survey is is very much that feeling that they do have one to one support. And, you know, because we're able to offer it in ways that are creative and online um, utilizing that digital learning platform you know we, we 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 do have a learning platform here at bgu it does allow us to integrate the various learning tools that, that students and academics are using and indeed that is and gives us that platform to support that ability for hybrid and online learning yeah. um, we've got to leverage those innovative technologies talked about that as well already the you know the ai the vr the augmented stuff um, and online support really, really key again in that offer. And again, coming back to that point on culture and collaboration, you can't do this unless you start to sow that seed at your at very much within your strategic layer within your organization. If we're going to do this and we're going to work in a hybrid way, you need lots of support areas on board in order to review policies and create space and 
buy and invest in the technologies integration in amongst that is key when you're looking at yeah. different islands of of digital services hopefully that sort of answers your question yeah definitely so on that theme of culture the survey did identify the challenges you know um, mm. when it comes to uh, communications collaboration it, it highlighted areas things challenges such as uh, staff workloads, retention, recruitment in the education sector. What what specific IT driven communication collaboration solutions are you using to help to address those challenges? Ultimately, improving staff well being, productivity. You yeah. mentioned the HR yeah. scenario there being questioned. That was a productivity question. They said, right. well, you need to be at a desk. One. Yeah, yeah, and a yeah, cultural absolutely. one as well, which ties in. So how, how, what solutions are you, use, you using to, to address those, as well as those at peak times as a university, you know, areas in your calendar where you think productivity needs to be at its highest at its peak because we're going through clearing and we've got huge demands on the university right now. Can you maybe talk and reflect on some of those? Yes, of course, of course. So, I mean, the biggest journey we've been on recently is a brand new student record system. And indeed, for many universities, um, we'll refer to that as our crown jewels. Yeah, that's our most important set, one of our most important sets of data. And it's our obligation to keep that very safe, very secure. But equally, that whole journey that happens from a student giving us an early wave that they'd like to come to an open day or indeed giving back when they're alumni at the other side of graduating and all the bits that happen in the middle, those support things, that communication, so we've, we, we've taken on a brand new journey and we've delivered a brand new student record system in 12 months, perhaps quicker than any other HEI in the sector. Um, and it's come with pain, but it's come with amazing opportunity as well. And one of those things is reducing that administrative burden, that those that paperwork that yeah, various corners stuff. of every business is still doing. And, and just by the virtue of things like automated communications in different steps of the applicant cycle. So students are clear, they get an email with some information in, but it's not all of the information they need. We're able to drip that in at the right points that they're gonna need access to that information. So ad admin burden, more systemization, automation and integration to help with some of those mundane tasks, certainly. A lot of that is about reviewing your processes and procedures, re reviewing the very things that we do every day. And some of that's quite challenging for certainly for for colleagues who may have been at an, a, a business for or in a role for a very long time. Sometimes, you, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And therefore, going on a new journey can sometimes be quite difficult, which is why having a very strong plan and a very strong strategic direction is very key to get everyone on board with that journey. So on from that, we've got, you know, we've got to enhance the professional development and career progression for our, our staff, our academics and our support staff. We can do some of that by use, utilizing online platforms and tools, and we can provide high quality training. And I mentioned the coaching and mentoring type kind of approach before. And all of this is, is we, you know, a lot of us, I'm, I'm talking to you from home today, you potentially are uh, too, Mark, and it's important that we get that work-life balance right. You know, the days of being sat in the office at half eight and leaving at five are still there, but are flexing on the edges. You know, I typically, as an IT person, I'm, I am picking stuff up outside of those core hours sometimes, and even when on annual leave, but um, that, you know, it's something that I potentially do. But certainly I see it, different working patterns emerging for different aspects of our business as a result of that flexibility. We've all got things going on in our lives and we all work and it's important that we get the balance right. Um, the, the final bit, I think, to do with that question is, is to do again about positive reinforcement and support of working in those creative ways with new ways to communicate with technology and collaboration. And again, that comes right back around to culture and being able to drive that from a strategic point of view. Um, all of that good stuff, of course, can, um, you know, puts us in a good spot when we're talking to our potential new students, yeah, customers that want to get something from us and indeed uh, keeping them as happy and supported as we can as we're moving through that journey with them over you know, potentially the three or four years they're here on an undergraduate degree, different kinds of courses, of course, like apprenticeships and postgraduate too. 
So the, the power of unified communications, yeah. the power of cloud-based solutions, which universities are adopting more and more now, is emphasized within the survey. Maybe you could share some specific examples or strategies that your institution has employed to harness these technologies for more efficient and cost-effective communications with either your, your, your workforce or indeed your, your customers, your students, and how that's enhancing their experiences. Because I think user experience is uh, uh, you know, crucial to technology being a success and whether that comes with picking the right solutions that can integrate into uh, existing applications that they already use and therefore they're going to adopt them uh, more seamlessly. Could you share some examples of, of what you've been doing to harness yeah, these technologies? So being on quite a journey, um, I have to say I've been in the in the role for uh, just over four years here at, at Bishop Cross Test University, and always as part of that start, we you know it, it's understanding what the services are that we have, how they're made up, how they're configured, and certainly one of the biggest output pieces of work we took on was to move all of that information that was stored across the old SAN based way of delivery, old file servers and, um, you know, devices that you could only use when you're on campus plugged in with group policy, you couldn't take that laptop away and work from home. So we had to start about by, first of all, reimagining the desktop experience that users were using. So that involved, you know, challenging conventional wisdom, which is which is a good place to begin. And indeed, all of that information now for us is within the uh, Microsoft 365 cloud. So that sits within SharePoint and OneDrive. So that's all the data in one place, which is which is fabulous. It's great from a, a backup perspective for us, but it, it goes back to that people being able to access that information whenever they need to, wherever they need to, and indeed on any device they need to. You know, we are um, public sector. We do have a lot of users that use their own devices. Be odd, bring your own device. And therefore, we've technically got to plan for that. So that's the data. We've got all that in one place. We've reimagined the desktop to allow people to work more cohesively between the on-premise, the home, the remote office, which could be anywhere. It could be home. It could be a cafe. It could be a conference, those kind of things. We've set about equipping staff with a singular device. That's important, too. So if it's a full-time member of staff, they'll have a single laptop that they're able to dock in with when they're on premise and obviously they can use when they're away. You'll know from our journey with Ring Central, when the pandemic arrived, we were in a bit of a pickle. Most of our things would scale quite well. We were running on Skype for business at the time. So we made a very rapid transition to Microsoft Teams, much like many, many businesses around the world. And we really quickly realized that our telephony was compromised because we'd got an old on premise I'll use the expression, it was running on tin um, and, you know, handsets plugged in and it, it was yep. 15 plus years old. We were giving it the magic, uh, turn it off and turn it on again once a week just to keep it running. Yeah, and in, supporting your smarter working plans, really. Wasn't correct. It? So it, it, it kind of caused <laughs> some major problems. Um, we very quickly did a piece of work to look at where we were using telephony in particular for business so yeah, talking, as a channel. yeah as a channel so either that was support that would have been perhaps new students existing students or external partnerships suppliers those kind of things and we very quickly built with ring central about 30 users that harnessed all of those front-facing services from student support main reception you know uh, placement activity um, admissions and recruitment, marketing, those kind of things. We got those up and running quite quickly on a proof of concept. That then enabled us to um, work with our supplier for our telephony at the time. We're still with them, Maintel. And as part of that journey, um, we were able to preserve the numbers that we had with different staff members across the business, move it across to Ring Central and at the same time reduce our burden on the number of lines. So we had 450 individual telephone lines. Today we're running on 200. That was a, a, you know, a really, really powerful step. I'd have gone a bit further, but it's back to that cultural readiness. Next time round, we'll operate much, much less than that. Um, you know, and 
it's been great because it allows us to operate telephony from wherever we need. Again, people can, you know, make, receive calls, call center, technology, those kind of things. So telephony shifted, the video platform shifted. So, you know, Teams. Um, and indeed, we're already also looking forward at other technologies. In fact, just this week, we've adopted Viva Goals, which is geared towards for us connecting all of the teams across VGU for our strategic priorities, uniting us for a single mission, a single purpose, and ultimately driving business results. And that's yeah. coming from, you know, Microsoft Project Online, and then those key elements coming out through Viva Goals. The other half of Viva, which we're just looking at at the minute, is Viva Engage. And part of Viva Engage, we're going to develop for our digital community. So not losing track of, of the important things, you know, people wanting to talk to each other. We, as part of our, our current strategy and our current goals, we're creating a physical comms room as well, a place for people to go and socialize, share ideas, see what the plans are in a physical way. And we're bringing that in line with the digital element too, for all of those that, that perhaps can't reach that, or you'll never get everyone in one place at that time. Yeah. Um, it's funny how the technology can actually then uh, change how, how you, your workplace and workspace is yeah, uh, is planned completely. for those you know, very but, reasons because you don't need that traditional this is what our building looks like this is how it operates when you yeah. apply the digital technology you can then reutilize the space in so many different ways so you know c costs for a university are, are forever our burden if you like in terms of things like energy and and other such things so Absolutely, our ability to create new spaces that allow people to work more in a hybrid way that enables us to release some of our building assets for other purposes. They're our most expensive assets and we need to be using them for the real specialist things that perhaps the student academic experience can't do online. You know, turning up to the to the archaeological dig and then in, in the wet labs, you know, cleaning off the finds and those kind of things. You can't do that stuff online. But certainly you could, um, you know, you can uh, perhaps conduct research on those digital scans of those objects and those kind of things. We've got lots of examples in that space. Our learning environment is online. We have got a cloud-based uh, learning management system or VLE, um, and that does provide that, that central point for students and academics to go to. It's the platform that we deliver our courses from, uh, you know, we manage assignments within, we, we, our grading is, is done through there and our feedback is done through there. But increasingly, I can see the analytics and I can see how people are voting with the technology too. So I can see just how much people are using Teams in their yeah. day to instant message and to hold very informal, you know, short online chats. And for us, yeah. The telephony landscape has translated, transformed massively. We no longer pick up the phone to talk to each other. We teams them. And indeed, that's true of email as well. We're emailing each other less. Email is when I'm talking to you. Mm. Whereas Teams, I'm, we're using it to talk to each other. There is a few tech partners that prefer Teams as a method of communication as well. But certainly that seems to be around where the rules are for us. Less email. Yeah. Emails used for external communication, a bit like the telephones, I suppose. And again, uh, you know, our internal comms are focused around teams with each other. Mm. Copilot is, is something we're quite excited about. Yeah, I was um, going yeah, to mention that. But, I'm uh, a techie. I like me, tech. Ta yeah, you did yeah. say. Tell me your thoughts on Copilot. Mate, I love it. I love the idea. <laughs> of um, you know, and... 50-50, we could have someone else on the call who's really, really concerned about, you know, generative AI's impact on learning and teaching. And it and it will impact. I, I was in the industry when Google appeared and, and everyone was really concerned that Google was going to end education in the way that we knew it. And uh, that hasn't happened. No. You know, we, we use that as a very, very key resource, many of us every day in our lives, but indeed as a as a tool to help us research things related to our learning. And Copilot needs, you know, and other technologies from other vendors um, need to be considered in that way. Yeah. You know? Well, in the in the survey, 
um, 70% of respondents said they were hugely in favor of you using AI to improve communications, either yeah. internally or externally with customers in this scenario yeah. with, uh, with students. Yeah. What do you think the primary factors contributing to the hesitation are in adopting AI? And uh, again, what it, positive steps do you reckon we could take? We to, don't know uh, what we don't know. So again, yeah, it's is that, that the fear, key? Is it, it education of, of, of the unknown? And you know, I think a majority of universities will use an anti-plagiarism tools like Turnitin and others, and they're seeing you know results of generative AI, which are in fact gaming those systems. So um, we've got to embrace the fact that it's here; it's going to be used. But it's really important then that our pedagogies and our approach to learning and teaching change accordingly. You know, I've got a background working in in, in that space for, uh, you may have heard the term scale up or scale up type delivery over at Nottingham Trent. That was a pioneering effort when we were open, when I was working over um, at that business. And indeed, that's their default model today for delivery of teaching, which is fabulous because it turns it more problem-based. So it isn't a simple answer that can be generated from the use of AI, but AI could be used to help with those answers when problems are presented and debated and discussed and, and worked through. So a very different approach to learning. Now I've heard a couple of ways of that in the past. Um, if BGU goes on and builds more lecture theatres, we've made a gross mistake, you know, um, and that's why we're already experimenting with technology that's no longer the centerpiece of the room. The lectern has gone, you know, the screen at the side is teams aware. It, it allows it to be moved around in the space as and when they need it. They can bridge um, either commercial, you know, um, event attendees in or they can use it very much for remote or ad hoc learning and teaching type based stuff. So the areas that we create going forward really are are ultimately flexible for all aspects of both teaching and learning event delivery and even when we meet in those spaces ourselves so and that and that's where we've got to be based on the fact that that's the world around us i don't know how you learn yourself personally but a lot of my learning certainly for the things i enjoy doing in hobbies i, I find online and i yeah. i watch little videos and that and that's a big challenge for education because we can get access to more current information through the web than perhaps the person, the sage on the stage in front of us. So increasingly for, for universities and certainly um, for academics, we become more uh, guides, guides on the side to help them navigate through and achieve in, in, in the best possible ways and creating spaces for that and having the technologies to, to work with that and indeed reviewing our you know, our very approach to how we deliver that is key. But it goes right back to the very top of where we started talking there, Mark, around culture, particularly, and, and, and how you move through that in a in a way that uh, gets everyone on the journey, really. Yeah. Greg, I've really enjoyed our talk today. Thank you very much for talking to me and sharing your insight. You're welcome. Thank you. Good to chat.